It's been 111 years since the tragic murder of eight people in Iowa. To this day, that murder, those murders remain unsolved. Five News photojournalist Laura Castleman explains the century-long mystery surrounding what happened in June of 1912. Everybody loved them. It's like, think of that family from your small hometown that everyone loves, everyone respects, nobody has a problem with. Joe was a businessman. Sarah was a... Uh, housewife, play piano for the church. He had been a clerk for F.F. F. Jones in Jones's hardware and implement dealer. And about five years before the murder, he left and became a competitor. Josiah Moore was 43 years old when the murder happened. His wife was 39. They had four children, three boys and a girl. Uh, Herman was the oldest. And then they had Boyd and Paul and Catherine. Catherine was next at, at 10 and Boyd was seven and Paul was five. Ina and Lena Stillinger and these two girls are just buddies of theirs, daughters, so they had a sleepover. So there's eight total, six kids sadly, two adults. Uh, everyone's in bed just like they went to sleep. Everybody loved them and all of a sudden they wake up and everyone's dead in bed. In the downstairs bedroom there were two victims. They had both been struck in the head above the neck uh, all the blows were struck uh, above the neck. That was true of all the victims. They had a face cloth over their face, which was a piece of clothing that the killer had picked up, and they had bed clothing pulled up over that. The axe was left downstairs, raw bacon laying on the floor, mirrors covered with sheets, food at the table, cigarette butts in the attic, bloody water, I mean, just tons of crime scene, all destroyed by half the town wandering around looking at it. At that point, half the town, the victim's families, thought Jones did it. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, state and local authorities are building a case against Reverend Kelly, the schizophrenic traveling minister. Uh, Lynn George Jacqueline Kelly, who was a Presbyterian minister, was in Villisca the night of the murder. He sent a bloody shirt to a laundry the week after the murder. It's a viable possibility that he was the killer. It can't be proven today, at least to my satisfaction. Uh, the newspaper said Sarah had the cleanest kids in town. Most of the scenarios, as far as the murder, revolve around Joe Moore. In a small town about a murder, it comes down to small town gossip. Mm -hmm. I mean, it makes no sense.